Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather next 10 to 14 days for today's second video. Uh, so day 10, we'll take around the 26th of uh, February. And we'll be able to extend out beyond that with, with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles. Maybe around, two, around uh, a couple of weeks. And we're going to have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of video for the next four weeks. I shall get on with that for you very shortly. Talking about the next four weeks uh, worth of weather. Just say that the ECM 30 day uh, forecast has uh, been released. Least. So check that one out if you would uh, like to do that. Uh, for, it's not just for UK, but it's for the uh, rest of Europe as well. So uh, yeah, check out the ECM 30 day. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. I think we're going to do Ensembles Watch uh, for you tonight because the GFS is beginning to play around. And we'll talk about this in the video, in the video of course. GFS is beginning to play around with the possibility of much colder weather returning uh, into the beginning of March. Maybe one last final cold blast um, before before we get on into spring. So, more about that in a moment, and I think we will have a look at the uh, GFS Ensembles tonight, on Ensembles Watch, see how much support that idea has for the weather becoming uh, a lot colder again early on into March. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see Ensembles Watch. So let's go on this video, though. So we're going to start off with the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're going to Edinburgh today. So the red line is a 30-year upper air temperature average for Edinburgh. You can see that we have gone above average at the moment. Of course, Scotland has a very cold winter. Those of us in the South uh, probably don't appreciate how cold it's been up across Scotland with a lot of places since Christmas, you know, having snow on the ground. It's all foreign away now, though. Scotland is joining in with the rest of the country, turning uh, very much milder. And for the next week, uh, uh, maybe next 10 days, it is looking uh, really mild as well. Bit of a zonal side wave, so we have got warmer and uh, colder sectors alternating with one another. But when you average out zonality in the winter, you still come out, uh, you still come out uh, generally milder than average, the reason being that even the, even the colder sectors are not cold enough to turn it colder than average. So a mild week, 10 days coming up. There's a bit of a drop in temperature being signaled there around the, uh, around the end of February. And then we get this huge amount of scatter, absolutely enormous amounts of scatter, with uh, with uh, mild ensemble members up here, but quite a lot of cold ensemble members down there. The GFS operation run has gone quite cold uh, again as well. Let's just refresh the page and make sure that all ensemble members are now being counted. Uh, there we go. So you see the overall thrust into the end of February and the beginning of March just here is, is still ready to keep things mild of an average. The majority of ensemble members are keeping things mild of average, but we continue to have these cold ensemble members uh, appearing, some very cold ensemble members. They're outliers, but they are there. Um, and possibly a little bit of a cooling trend uh, with the ensemble image of the white line just dipping back towards the red line right at the very end. There's not enough there today, but we will turn cold again into early March. But it's definitely a distinct possibility, no more than that. Precipitation-wise, of course, most of this period is going to be mild and also unsettled. So the rest of February is generally looking quite mild and rather wet. As we go towards the end of February into the beginning of March, you may have a little bit of a drying train, presumably, as, as it might be starting to get colder. Temperature anomalies from the 16th to the 24th of February are going to be above average for the UK, Ireland, and most parts of West Europe as well. The cold and average temperature, temperature anomalies have been pushed back into the far eastern part of Europe. Precipitation anomalies from the 16th to 24th of February are going to be above average. So a mild and wet sort of week coming up for this third week of February. Latest wind flow map from EarthNorthSchool.net shows that we have gone back into those mild west or southwest is there back in. Uh, once again, you can follow the lines back. You can see that the air is originating well into the Atlantic and flooding in across uh, not just the UK, but most of Western Europe as well. Conversely, though, those cold northerly northeasters have gone plunging down into the east and southeast side of Europe. Look at that real northerly blast from Russia all the way down in towards Greece and Turkey. It's been snowing heavily in Athens, and that's going to continue. So the cold weather anyway, going to continue for the next uh, couple of days or so. 
probably next week, actually. Right, this LUK Met is looking for Friday, Ben. Still bringing mild winds off the Atlantic for Western Europe on Friday. Looking rather wet and windy as well. Into Saturday, we get a push of very mild southwesterly winds. Good lift temperatures in the southeast up to 18 Celsius. But there will be a price to pay with heavy outbreaks of rain. We keep those mild southerly southwesters going into Sunday as well. Always mildest weather in the south-southwest. Get to 144 hours, which is Monday the 22nd of February. We're still looking mild uh, with wings. This time going a little bit more west. So probably a slightly cooler day on Monday, but generally, again, still on the mild side. Now, this is how the GFS midnight uh, run is looking. Midnight operation run. Have a look at this. See what happens. So low pressure again is out to our west on Friday. Plenty of wet and windy weather from Friday into Saturday. Drawing up these very mild southerly winds as well into the south. The country could well boost the temperature to be teen Celsius over the weekend. Into next week, the uh, GFS uh, midnight run actually turns quite stormy. We're, with very tight packed isobars there from Monday into Tuesday. That could give gale or severe gale force winds. Could that be a name storm? <laughs> we're waiting to see whether we're going to get Storm Gavin or not this uh, this season. That might be a name storm there early next week if it was to come off. Um, wouldn't be Storm Gavin, though. We've got a couple more to get through before we get to G uh, on the list. Um, we go through into the middle of next week. We turn showery and a little bit cooler then with winds coming in from the northwest. But it's still all Atlantic driven, all Atlantic based. So, although a few degrees cooler, it's still on the mild side. Uh, moving up towards day 10, high pressure then starts to ridge in uh, from the west and from the southwest, turning us drier. And then we see this high pressure taking over for the final days of February. Now, on the, at the same time, as the high pressure is trying to ridge towards Scandinavia, we're pulling down extremely cold air into the north and northeast of Europe again, with these north to north easterly winds. So that's how the upper air temperatures look at 300 hours on the midnight GFS run gets us to Sunday, the 28th of February, we are on the cusp of extremely cold air again, sitting across northern, eastern and northeastern parts of Europe. Another really big plunge of cold air has moved into northern Europe. We're actually mild with the upper air temperatures. Of course, out of the ridge, there's probably going to be frost and thaw. But the upper air temperatures, are only, the very cold upper air temperatures, are only on the other side of the North Sea. Now, the GFS midnight run then has a go at getting the wind into the east. In fact, we do pull in easy winds, but we keep those extremely cold upper air temperatures still over the other side of the North Sea before the ridge then begins to slip down into the uh, UK. So we don't quite form a Scandinavian high and so we get a near miss, get a near miss on midnight GFS run uh, of like a, a like another beastly easterly. Most parts of Europe have plunged back into the freezer and we do pull in low level content of air. These are the dew points for the second of March and you'll see that dew points have actually turned uh, cold again. So it does get cold under that ridge of high pressure. But the, the, the extremely cold BCEs are just kept at bay on the other side of the North Sea. But obviously it's a very, very close run thing. Very fine margins. And uh, and we would have to watch out because we're not at all far away from beastly Eastleys again uh, into the opening days of March. That's how the midnight GFS run looks. Now, this is the 6Z. Uh, so let's have a look at this one, just updated. Again, Friday, generally mild, uh, wet and uh, unsettled with low pressure driving in from off the Atlantic. We keep these unsettled conditions going into the weekend. Maybe not quite as much mild air from the south with the GFS 6Z over the weekend. Perhaps limiting the temperatures back a little bit, but it is still a mild spell of weather, even if we don't, don't get the temperature into the mid-teen Celsius, it is still uh, a considerably milder than average spell of weather coming up. Early next week, again, quite a deep area of low pressure north of Scotland, possibly bringing some gale force winds across the country Monday into Tuesday. Uh, not quite as deep with below as the midnight GFS was, but nevertheless, we do need to watch out for potentially quite a stormy spell early next week. Um, then into the middle and second half of next week, again, we start to try and reach some high pressure in from the southwest, but still actually looking a little bit changeable, to be honest, with the uh, GFS 6 z we eventually get a bit of a ridge building uh, just after day 10, particularly across more southern parts of the country. A managing extended range, the GFS 6 that is also going colder, but it's doing it through a different route. Instead of bringing in easterly winds, or trying to bring in easterly winds, this time the GFS 6 starts to show 
retrogression and take the high pressure up towards Greenland. So there we go. We get to the 1st of March, first day of meteorological spring, and we're setting up a 1,050 millibar Greenland high and turning wind into the north. So uh, the GFS 6 said becomes much colder through the opening week of March, but from northerly winds as that big blocking area of high pressure sets up over Greenland, trough of low pressure plunges through northern and western Europe and squeeze of the ice bars sends the wind into the north northeast and um, the upshot is we go much colder again this time from the north there's the upper air temperature not plunging northern europe into an absolute freeze at this time but certainly turning much colder uh with those northerly northeasts now then the gfs uh six days stays very cold up to the uh, to the air missing the, fir the 4th of march 34th march as far as we go northern blind continues around green and low pressure uh the trough you know is across northern western europe looking very cold and potentially uh, very wintry for much of northern and western Europe via the Greenland high. Not the Scandi high, but via the Greenland high. So two different routes to cold, but both routes getting much of northern and potentially western Europe uh, a lot colder into early March. It's all extended range stuff, though, and so that's why we have to look at the GFS ensembles, you know, the ensembles last night, see how much, uh, you know, how many ensemble members are going in those sort of colder directions into early March. It's ultra-long range forecasting, but we'll have a look tonight. Right, let's have a GEM is rocking. Again, all rather wet and windy uh, over the weekend, particularly in the north and west, but at least it will be mild. Into early next week, could turn a little bit storm with some gale force winds, but they are really mild winds from the uh, southwest. And uh, whoops, we don't want to go there, we want to go back to there. And then we go through towards day 10 with the GM. And just signs that by day 10, 26th March, we might be starting to introduce something a little bit cooler from the northwest. But most of next week is actually mild and unsettled. And then this is how the ECM is looking, again, rather mild, wet and windy over the weekend with winds in from a southerly southwest direction. will be particularly mild in the south, but there will be rain at times. Into early next week, we keep these mild southerly southwesterlies going. So continuing uh, with the mild theme through most of next week with the ECM up to day 10, uh, 26th of February. Again, low pressure. Looks like it's going to continue to barrel in. But might have backed off the idea of high pressure taking over through the latter stages of February. So a couple of days ago, there was an idea that we would turn mainly dry under a big ridge of high pressure. Now it just looks like we're going to keep things pretty unsettled, but also mild um, up to the closing days of February. This will be precipitation type forecast based on that ECM run from Tometio.com. There will still be a little bit of snow at times in the next few days across the north, particularly across Scotland, maybe parts of Northern Ireland, but generally most places are going to be seeing uh, rain now through the rest of this week, especially so into the weekend when it does get very mild uh, indeed. Into next week, again, further bouts of rain coming and going, always affecting the north and west more than the south. Um, the southeast, so uh, just unsettled and generally mild into next week. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10. Gets to the 26th of February 14. Members of the ECM ensembles are trying to uh, build up the Greenland high, but also have high pressure to the south of the uh, UK. So the upshot is they're generally mild at day 10 with winds in from the west. 13, uh, we'll have high pressure uh, again around Green and in the North Atlantic, but also uh, to the east of the UK and Ireland and a ridge extending through the UK as well. So they're mainly settled with high pressure, you know, dominating the weather, bringing a lot of fine weather um, and could be frost and fog, but, but not particularly cold. 13, including the control and the operational run, we'll have low pressure to our west, high pressure will be over to the east. We'll be drawing up a mild or a very mild southerly southwesterly. And uh, 11 just here, we'll have high pressure again sitting generally to our east, but also extending into the UK. A little bit more anticyclonic, possibly bringing the air in off the continent. Could be some frost and fog with that, I suppose, but would be pleasantly mild and uh, plenty of sunshine by day. In two weeks' time, uh, these are the options that we've got. We have 28 members of the ECM ensembles then building high pressure just to our north, um, presumably turning wind into a colder easterly. 
Uh, 13, with low pressure over the top of the country, combined with some high pressure towards Greenland. It's going to be very unsettled and might be having a go. This is the 3rd of March, by the way. Might be having a go at pulling the winged in from the north with that. I think overall generally still uh, still reasonably mild and probably very unsettled with that chop of low pressure. But as heights are relatively high towards green, we could be starting to try and infiltrate some cold air into a trough. It would depend whether that trough, you know, sinks away southwards. Uh, and if it does, then we could start pulling cold air from the north. And we've got 10 just here, but again, have high pressure um, to our north, northwest, somewhere between Greenland and uh, Norway. So that's probably, again, bringing quite cold air from the east. So we get to early March and, and we could be starting to shift into a, a rather colder pattern. Uh, finally, we've got CFSV2. These are 500 millibar heights breaking down to wheat peers. The first wheat peer takes from 16th to 22nd of March. The coming week is going to be very, uns uh, very unsettled and also mild, of course. High pressure will be to our south and uh, east. Low pressure will be to our north and west. Winds will be in from a mild or a very mild southwesterly direction. Get through to week two when it's all changed. Uh, certainly turns one set of weather anyway. This is the 23rd of February to the 1st of March. High pressure then sits over the top of the country. Settles us down. Probably relatively mild under that ridge of high pressure. Although by night it could be cold with frost and fog. But by day probably relatively mild with uh, sunny, uh, you know, sunny conditions and, and, and a nice little early uh, spell of spring. Week 3 looks colder. This is the 2nd to the 8th of March. A high pressure going northwards, almost becoming a northern blocking feature again. Certainly centering between Iceland and Scotland and almost certainly enough to pull in colder winds from the uh, northeast. So that could well be uh, colder through the first week of March. There's quite a bit of evidence stacking up, isn't there, that this first week of March might see perhaps one last uh, very cold spell. Or cold spell. Uh, and then week week four, which is second week of March, is the night to the 15th of March. Um, we've got a trough of low pressure sitting to our east. So that's going to be absolutely frozen cold, freezing cold from most parts of Europe. Just on the periphery of that, we've got high pressure down towards Spain. So we're trying to get wind back into the west here. Um, but with the trough sitting just to our east northeast, we could be pulling in some cold winds from a north or northwesterly direction. Maybe it starts off very cold and wintry and then it progresses to something a little bit milder and wessy. Something like that could be going on. But there is a little bit of evidence here that early March might start to see uh, much colder weather returning, at least for a while, and particularly for Northern Europe, whether we tap into that in the UK and Ireland on the, on the edges of Europe, as always, you know, whether we tap into it may be seen. But I think the evidence is growing that Northern Europe in particular might be plunged back into a very cold spell in the opening stages of March. As I say, we'll do Ensemble's watch tonight and see uh, what, what uh, evidence there is with the GFS Ensemble's of this change back to much colder weather in early March. Right, if you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. You'll be able to see future weather content if you uh, do that. Tell your friends, family, and everybody else to subscribe as well. We are grinding our way to 11k subscribers. Thank you so much, everybody. And, uh, yeah, drop a comment and let us know uh, what you think about this and all of the videos. Right, we're going to be back uh, this evening, probably around 8-ish, I would have thought, with Ensembles Watch. We'll go through all members of the uh, GFS Ensembles. We'll probably have a look at 12 as well while we're doing it, and uh, so that will be up a little bit later on. Tomorrow, we're going to have a USA forecast. I'll be live streaming uh, from 6 o'clock, about 10 to 14 day update, so check that out. Um, but for this one, that's all for now, and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later on for Ensembles Watch. Bye for now.